Welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Howdy, y'all! I be a pirate. Yeehaw! <laughs> yep, yep. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. I am utterly disgusted by your attempt to be a pirate, Silver. Go off a bridge or something. I don't care. Elegance. <laughs> okay, darling. And last but not least, our guest host for this week is Mad Munchkin. Unlike Safi and Silver, I don't have an intro. That's it. <laughs> that was it. Just hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back. Well, fuck my biscuits and bobby jemadaya. And I'm really Jemidaya. happy and scared to be here too. Uh, you know how I feel every week, hey, uh, Maddie. You know how I feel every week. But in today. Uh, yes, indeed, do join us. But anyway, for this week's episode review, I have a point. I have a pony. Uh, pony point. Well, okay, wow, dude, what you do in your own time? <laughs> okay, okay that, that joke failed. Okay, anyway, uh, we're going to review season 6, episode 22, <laughs> Pony Point of View. Uh, in this episode, Toilet Sparkle must discern the truth after Applejack Rarity and Pinkie Pie return from their boat trip angry at each other and with three different versions of the trip events. So yeah, this is a uh, he say, she say kind of deal. Before we officially jump in, I think we should go to first impressions. And let's go a bit of a uh, loop-de-loop and start with Sapphire. Oh god, oh boy. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you sound so excited to talk about this episode. <laughs> I think the only good thing I've ever really liked from this episode that I can remember is how over-exaggerated the other ponies' interpretations were of each other. I I don't know. I wanted to see how this would end, but the ending just left me face-palming more than anything. And for that, I pass it on to whoever's next. All right, then. And Silver, what about you, my good sir? Oh, so first impressions. Well, first, Applejack was all like, yar! And then Rarity was all like, darling! And Pico was all like, yeah! <laughs> and so I was like, oh my god, these idiots. Wait, wait, so Pinky became that stupid cat from the Thundercats 80s series? Snarf, snarf! Yeah, that snarf. guy. Not just say that Thundercats was stupid. No, I'm saying the Did 80s not... one with the cat. I'm not saying the series was stupid, I'm just saying the cat thing was. Snarf. Yeah, snarf, snarf. <laughs> snarf that okay. thing. Okay, 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 okay. But he was the comedic relief. <laughs> well, if we're going with if we're going with Pokemon sounding sidekicks, uh, well, we could always talk about Kremzeek. <laughs> what? Is that even real? That's a thing. I... That's a thing. Before there was Pokemon, there was Kremzeek. Oh God, what's that? Like, you know what? If, no, no, no. no. If, I'll tell you later. Yeah. I'll tell you later, yeah, yeah. though. Though my fellow Transformers fans, help me petition for Kremzeek to be in the next Pokemon game. <laughs> oh, God. He's already got the lingo down. <laughs> but, all right, for realsies, though, I I had a lot of fun with this episode. I mean, he said, she said, cop stories are classics. They can be cliche, but usually it's the most fun. I find it hilarious that these ponies, in describing one another... They're actually less complimentary than when Rainbow parodied them in uh, in Newbie Dash. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, she, she amped up their tr- traits, but they were all the positives. Here, they're just turning one another into t- into classic stereotypes. So, I will agree with Safi that the ending felt it felt like a cop out. It felt like we can't we can't allow these characters to just acknowledge they made a mistake. We have to introduce a third party fourth party in this case so the ending left something to be desired although cuteness meters going off the scale why oh, 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 that's sorry. right the cuteness sorry. is too much the reflex sorry so, so what was cute again <laughs> oh, oh i'll i'll save it for when we actually talk about the spoilers because otherwise oh right I okay i i i think i get what you mean but but all in all, it was a fun episode. Great take on the classic. He said, she said, but maybe a little bit of the magic solution at the end. All right. Makes everything fine. Also, incredibly unhygienic ponies. <laughs> yep. 
I'll talk about why later. <laughs> All right. You know. And Amy, what about you? Um, yeah, this is a pretty straightforward episode. Um, you know, like you guys have already said, it's a he said, she said thing, but something happens and all three of them give their own version of it. None of them are wrong because there is no such thing as a wrong interpretation. It's just their different perspectives of the same event. It's the Rashomon effect, you know, so it's uh, stories that we've seen in other shows before. Um, this one was probably more comedic in its delivery than other versions because usually the Rashomon kind of effect is usually used in murder mysteries and things. So it was kind of fun just to have this um, pretty straightforward, silly episode. And what one of the things that, that I enjoyed the most was Spike all the way through the episode. If you watch his animation, he's always trying to get out of taking notes. And Twilight is always like... Um, forcing the quill and the paper back in his claws again. And I thought that was just adorable. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanted to know what happened. How, how, how did you get back to shore if the ship sank? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we don't know. Total mystery. Cartoon logic. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And as for me, this one was rather interesting because I would have never thought that this is how they went. Usually when you have a point of view kind of story, you'll always get the over-exaggerated hype moment of said story from each person. Like, oh my god, this is so awesome and whatnot. And I was thinking more of, you remember the one uh, about the Discord story? Uh, what was that called? What about Discord? Oh, I don't remember. Where Twilight was stuck in the library for three days, reshelving oh. everything. Yep, yeah, that, that was my bad Discord. Right, yeah, I was I was hoping for something like that where Twilight had to dissect everything and find out for herself. But no, we we get them fighting, which is rather what ponies fighting each other and they're not in fighting is magic. Okay. Ah, yeah. So yeah, that's supposed to get. Uh, can I add something yeah, to what ahead. I decided? Yeah, um. Something that I really wanted the show to do sometime is to have actual realistic conflict between friends because friends fall out all the time over really stupid things. And it was just really cool to see them actually fall out and then just refuse to talk to each other. And then Twilight's left to try and pick up the pieces kind of thing. It was kind of solved a bit too conveniently, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah. call shenanigans <laughs> on the ending. Yeah. But still, uh, this episode to me was fun. And like everybody mentioned, the ending was a bit out of left field. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anywho, with first impressions aside, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, I implore you to do so because it was a pretty fun one, even though you kind of quote-unquote decipher the ending already. But we'll be waiting for you. And welcome back. So, we start off the episode with Twilight. We're heading to the train station and being really excited to meet her friends, saying that Applejack, Pinkie Pie, and Rarity are going on a boat trip, you know, to go do something that they're not used to, getting out of their elements and whatnot. Too bad Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash couldn't appear because they had to go to their high school reunion, go read the comic books. I think that was... Cross-media continuity. <laughs> not really, but I'm just putting it there. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, Twilight reaches the train station and, well, wanting to know every little detail, she wants to interview them and whatnot. Train, trains arrive, they see an angry bunch of ponies, and we're surprised too because what happened here? Like, literally, what happened here? What, what would make you guys the best of friends fight over? I'm sure it's not a guy. Well, honestly, Given the number of times these these characters have brawled with one another, it's probably just someone dropped a pen. <laughs> oh, You've doomed us all! Oh, I've got ink poisoning because of you. Uh, Personally, I think Twilight's just fascinated by this whole thing because it gives her a reason not to sit in her castle and do nothing again. Uh, I, I don't think... It's just like less than two. It's like, if I can't find a friendship problem, I'll make a friendship problem! Then she's just so, like, really into solving this, this problem. And just, it's just so entertaining. <laughs> so, Twilight is a, basically a drama llama. 
Uh, but in all honesty, I think the reason, well, one of the strongest reasons why Twilight would want their, her friends to kiss and make up is just to, well, do where the elements of harmony, the friendships needs to be strong with us. If not, the Sith will come and conquer us all. I think she just wants to see them kiss, period. Oh yeah, that's too. <laughs> So now he's just seeing what we were all thinking, so. <laughs> now, now they're fighting, now they're kissing, now they're fighting, now they're kissing. So, so, um, Twilight Secret Ship folder thing, the game <laughs> is canon now? It's still going full tilt. <laughs> I'm still disappointed they didn't add me in it. <laughs> oh, give, give a brother a break. I've only, I only had so many slots on the card deck. But what do you guys think about this one, Silver? What, the Twilight's... No, 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 church? about about the guys coming over the train being angry. What was your first point of... What, what was your first thought about this? I'm sure they can't help it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you see, you see them, and honestly, Rarity and Applejack being mad at one another is nothing new. Pinkie Pie being mad at anything is... What is going on? <laughs> my worldview... My yeah, worldview is challenged. Yeah. So Up I yeah. <laughs> Up is down, left is right, black is white, and man gets killed at a zebra crossing. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, so, literally, you got no idea what w- would happen, like what happened beforehand. Got no idea what happens, but I found it adorable that when, uh, when the three try to storm off, Pinky has to go over the train just to have her own escape vector. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Pinkie Pie, master of escapism. <laughs> And Seppi, what about you? Don't have really any initial thought on the intro. It's just there. <laughs> okay. And Maddie? Yeah, so much of what Silver said, um, seeing Pinky angry about anything is just like, oh, something really bad's going down. Yeah. What's happened, Pinky? Yep, yep. Did someone burn a cake? Did someone, like, put too much? Did someone mix up the salt with the sugar? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, oh, Pinky, Pinky's bringing the salt. Salter of Lantern Crick, man. <laughs> it was just like in, um, I can't remember the name of the episode, but it was when Starlight is, she's baking with Pinkie Pie, but Pinky's still angry at her for burning a cake, which is like the, the worst thing that anyone could possibly do. Because burning a cake is like murder to Pinky. Every like, little thing she does, that was the name of the episode. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, then You're basically pony. That's not a word. Right now. <laughs> oh, God, sweetie, your boy's going to have a field day. Starlight is, is trying her best to like do this cake mixture, and then she's really nervous and trying so hard, and Pinky's still angry, but then... She just sees how she's struggling, but sh- still trying, and, and then eventually Pinkie Pie comes around and like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's trying. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, getting back to this episode, the the reveal from the the the, 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 the three characters when they come off the train, just oh, it's gonna be one of those episodes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, the, the way you said that always makes me think <laughs> of Fosios for him. Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> Say that again, hun. What? Um, you said something about going off the rails from the train. <laughs> you, I'm going you off the rails on the crazy train. The crazy train. Yes. Uh, but anywho. It's all aboard the hype train. Now they're getting off the hype train because no one is hyped. So, yeah. yeah. But anywho, um, Twilight kind of wants to solve the problem. So... Like any good problem solver tactic is tea party. Tea party always works. Whenever you're mad at someone, invite a tea party. Unless <laughs> you're in politics. Oh god. And build no. a I mean sorry. <laughs> That's right, I said it. I went there. <laughs> oh gosh, no. Uh but still, um guests arrived and we're greeted by Gummy Winona and Opalescence, each having a note telling Twilight that Yo, man, we can't come because you invited some other fools. We ain't coming, y'all. Yeah. Okay. I'm only... not going because she's coming. <laughs> okay. Oh, truly, truly, only Rarity could sound that white. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I just like how each each um note was it just sounded just like the characters, and I mean I know that's kind of a given, but 
<laughs> every time Twilight read out a message, it, it, there was almost a twang of reading in their Lying. their character. Like, you know, <laughs> difficult to explain. I'll just stop talking. I know, I know what you mean. And Twilight yeah. has a Twilight has a habit of casting her friends in her fantasies. That's why she can never read Fifty Shades of Hay. She <laughs> She'd envision Cadence in shining armor the whole time. Oh, uh, no. No. <laughs> oh, God. No. Yes. Yes. That silver, bad. Oh, no. That silver, <laughs> I may, Don't I may, touch him. I may be bad, but I feel good. Uh, <laughs> Mary, you want to take the broom? I have faced the alicorn of the broomness. I shall call her Princess of Brooms. <laughs> she made a clean sweep. <laughs> Princess of brooms and the queen of brooms. <laughs> Learn the difference. Oh, stupid glorified pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, not being deterred by friends not coming, Twilight goes to each pony. And we start off with the story of how Rarity interprets her story. Oh, the couch gag is here again. Ah, oh, so dramatic. Yeah, fainting couch has returned. Yes, the fainting couch mm-hmm. has returned. Yay, <laughs> animation budget has been upheld. So, <laughs> anywho, uh, the story starts off with Rarity only carrying light. Like, oh, I just have only one bag to bring. Uh, she says <laughs> that Pinkie Pie has a lot of party stuff and Applejack's acting weird. You would say that she's Jack Sparrowing it. <laughs> no? No? I'm- She's just going to let the silence speak for that one. Uh, sandbag it. Yes, just a more of sandbag that one. Uh, so anywho, they sail off to sea and have, well, Rarity's idea for this vacation is to have a luxury cruise liner kind of deal, having all the pampered foods and whatnot. And yeah, Pinkie Pie, Rarity serves up some hors d'oeuvres from cucumber sandwiches to mini cupcakes and muffins to so on. And, well, Pinkie Pie doesn't want to left, be left out of her party and she serves up her own dish of Calatin candies, uh, circus peanuts, mm-hmm. and so on. And she says that Applejack didn't really want it and throw everything overboard like, ha-ha, no, this is not what we want. The pirate life is for me. Yo-ho. <laughs> and the pony stop. Spike and Twilight say, what? Are you sure that's them? Because that doesn't sound like them. Are you sure about this? You keep using that word. I don't think you know. it means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, con- Rarity continues on the story about how Pinkie Pie wants to have parties and have fun on a boat while Applejack is sailing the ship. Suddenly, there's a storm coming and everybody seems to be fighting over the map and so on. And boat sinks into the sea. And, yeah, Rarity is so traumatized that she couldn't go on with the story. And she says, go to Pinkie Pie to verify my story. She'll see the same thing as I did. Yar, hard, diddly, deeb. Being I a pirate is okay with me. of the song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You are a pirate. So before I head on to Pinkie's story, what do you think about Rarity's story? Believable? No, but Pirate Applejack t- steals the show either way. It's true that. <laughs> You know what I loved about Rarity's story the best? It was like, oh, well, they could have drowned because the boat sank and everything. But no, the thing that she was most concerned about was her bloody jacket being ruined. <laughs> and her and her cucumber sandwiches. Oh, yeah. And her although, cucumber sandwiches. Although this much at least appears to be factual. There's a giant apple on the sail, hmm. which makes me wonder, why is Applejack always going on about the family's financial straits when they can afford a boat? I don't. <laughs> I think that's their <laughs> boat. That could probably be one of the apples' boat. Like you know, they'll have apples mm. from Appaloosa, from Baltimore, and so on. So this could be one of the apples that sea apples. I don't know. Probably. I don't. I don't know if that's the case. Then, uh, hey, cousin Braper, we're having trouble this year. Can you float some bits our way? Sorry, cuz, I got five mortgages to pay on my fleet. <laughs> that I never use cuz I'm in Appaloosa. <laughs> yep, that sounds about right. Uh, but still. <laughs> also, would you all stop, please stop shipping me with other guys? I've never shown a preference one way or another. <laughs> Yeehaw! But little Bigfoot, <laughs> she seems attractive. Uh, but anywho, 
we head off to Pinkie Pie at Sugar Cube Corner, where she retells the story. And her story would go as, oh, Applejack was acting a bit strange, while Rarity had a lot of hand ponies who brought a lot of bags, like a lot, like a lot of them. She serves her common food, as Rarity say, and threw it away to put her hors d'oeuvres. Suddenly, she just threw everything away. Like, what? This doesn't really look like Rarity and saying those cucumber sandwiches are like 10 seconds ago. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of, what? Is this how Pinkie Pie looks at Rarity? Because, hmm, okay. So we continue on with them playing the piñatas and whatnot. Rarity not being interested because like, oh, this is commonplace. I, I, I'm not interested in this. <laughs> Go away, peasant. And Pinkie Pie gets Applejack to play um, the piñata game. And suddenly, storms are coming. And yeah, same thing happened. <laughs> Fight over map. And ship sank. Yeah. And it was all Rarity's fault. Yep. <laughs> But can we can we just say Viva Piñata? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Viva Piñata. Well, only mm-hmm. a handful of the audience got that <laughs> reference. There was an Xbox 360 launch title. It was good. It even had a cartoon of it. Oh, is that how it started? It started with a cartoon. No, no, it started with the 360. With the with the game. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I never. Now what you guys are referencing. <laughs> We're referencing stuff that might have been before you were even born, youngin. Well, technically not really. Isn't, like... Technically what? he's right because I'm only two years old. Oh, yeah, true, that's true. <laughs> but anyway, what do you guys think about Pinky's version of the story? I'd rather talk about Pinky's incredible resistance to heat because she pulls a tray of muffins out of the oven without any apparent oven mitt in her mouth. Really? Well, not that I, not that I can tell. I need to... Perhaps pull up the whole episode, but oven, metal, heat, face, face, (laughs) pinky lips, technically the girl's fireproof. Wait, didn't she just put that one in? Oh, is it? Well, I'm looking at this. Yeah, she she put it in, not, she didn't take it out. Yeah. Oh my, that just sounds like a slash track right there. Oh god. (laughs) Well, I hope she remembers the oven mitts then, because good gravy, I... I don't know what else to say to that. Pinky, you're, you've got to be alive for your battle with Deadpool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that happened. Actually, I think she went on with the story for so long that the oven burned. Yep. <laughs> oh, great. Then she's going to be all, all upset for the rest of the day, too, as she uh, is yet another sac- heroic sacrifice of the, of the flower variety. <laughs> oh, yeah. But Pinky's story here, it, it lines up a bit, but Rarity... The snobby rarity in Pinky's mind is fascinating. Well, I think the I think based on Sweet and Elite, we can say Pinky's correct about uh, the luggage count. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, true that. I, I don't yeah. think she's even sure because it could be more. Why? <laughs> and Pinky just says, "Why don't you ask Applejack? I think she can verify that one." <laughs> also, Pinky did verify that Applejack had an eye patch. It's just from the pinata thing. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So I'd say that at least is. How shall we say? Proven, proven facts, but not, not really expanded upon. Uh, but still, uh, talking about Applejack, we head off to the Sweet Apple Acres, where Applejack says they, she blames everyone. Everyone was being a derp. Like, she was there trying <laughs> to put a treasure hunt, making everybody feel happy, and then you have Rarity dressing up like Rose from Titanic, and Pinky being all nuts. Like, huh. Blame everyone! Blame everyone! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And going back going back to Pinky's side, I just loved when Rarity is just like luxury cruises never sink. <laughs> mm. Oh no, we're not gonna bring that one up. Like there's a few I can think of my head. No, no, no. <laughs> at, le- at least she said now she didn't say now Pinkie Pie, draw me like one of your French mares. <laughs> <laughs> ah Yeah. Yeah, that's a ship waiting to happen. Yeah, it's already been done. Back to like a man. <laughs> and the ship, Speak and like that ship, <laughs> and that ship sank. Oh God! <laughs> into shallow water. <laughs> Went into the sea, but no, let's let's um have a scene where they spit into the water. Yeah. Oh boy. Because that's romantic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway. anyway. Hey, 
They're about to exchange fluids either way. Oh, God. But, oh, God. <laughs> uh, but oh, anywho, uh, Apple Jack is scouting all around. And yeah, uh, Pinkie Pie serves up the first dish, which is her cotton candies and so on. And Rarity says, huh, those are commoner foods. Here, have my hors d'oeuvre of the fine and richest darlings. I, I think the word is, oh, darling, that food isn't fit for a pony of proper breeding, darling. And refinement, darling. Now my cucumber sandwiches, on the other hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. Darling, darling, darling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although, that strikes an uncomfortable memory for me. I, uh, I was working for a TV studio once upon a time. Mm -hmm. First job out of college. And we had a guy rent out the studio. And he brought lunch for everyone from uh, Jason's Deli. Oh, is that a popular brand? It's an expensive brand, more than anything. I mean, the food's good, but it costs a lot. And he, he said that when he entered the business, he swore he'd never eat poor people food. Oh. We all kind of looked, we all looked at him like, what is poor people food? Well, uh, you know, spaghetti, ramen, meatloaf. What the? I was like, dude, you, well, uh, he's a client, so I couldn't really say anything, but in my head, I'm thinking, dude, you stick that where the sun don't shine. I like spaghetti. I like, so, meatloaf, you, you, oh. especially the song. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I have to, I have to say something about this because, as a person who likes food a lot, spaghetti, if served right, can be damn expensive. Well, that's all, I didn't even get into that either. But yeah, I was like, what are you saying, you crazy boy? Yeah, you're crazy. You, you Why are you all crazy? Stop being crazy. Could you just imagine if suddenly Gordon Ramsay's put meatloaf on the menu? And said meatloaf costs about a hundred bucks, dollars American. Could you just imagine? He probably would. Yeah, like, would he just say meatloaf is like a commoner food? Like, yeah. Believe me, this guy was off his rocker as far as I'm concerned. Well, like, that, that's... When people say commoner food, it's just like, what? I don't care if it's commoner food. I don't care if it's a rich of a rich. It better be dang tasty. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're sidetracking, by the way. But hey, who? Hey, I am sharing life experiences. Oh, yeah, true that. Oh, well, oh. And also, I'm telling... suddenly hungry. Yeah, you know me. I, I, <laughs> I like food. That's why people subscribe to my Instagram, because I post food. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to make spaghetti now. Thanks, Silver. <laughs> I just want to meatloaf around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But anywho, carrying on, Applejack walks around and steps on a ball, and trips and crashes into Rarity where she accidentally drops the hors d'oeuvres, the, cu the cucumber sandwiches and whatnot to the ocean. And Rarity's peeved off because of this and Rar Applejack is apologetic. And yeah, thing continues on. Pinky asks if you want to play piñata or not and Applejack becomes the victim again. So you have a consistent story here going on. Uh, um, storms are coming, and then they sink. Yep. They're on Gilligan's Isle. Uh, on our account, Spike here just wants to know, how did you guys get back on shore? And looking at all the data that he gathered, it just doesn't make up. What's going on here? Like, wh where's the connection? I don't see it. And Twilight being Twilight, reads a few lines, and Eureka, I found the answer, and I know how to prove everything. Like, I know, I'm Phoenix Wright. Let's go. She gathers around everybody to the dockyard, and yeah, she says, I know what's going on, and I can prove it. And Spike here really wants to know, how did you guys get back on shore? And they retell the story. They weren't far off from the ocean, <laughs> and they were kind of on shallow waters. So, yeah. Did, did, <laughs> yeah. You do have to ask the question, if the water wasn't, was shallow enough for them to stand in, how did the ship sink? Or as we're about to ask a question, how did it conceal a certain someone? Ah, true that. Uh, but still, the jokes aside, Twilight says, I know the answer and please come with me. Putting their life jackets on, Twilight asks Spike to reveal the secret weapon, which is the cucumber sandwiches. She throws it to the ocean and explains every little detail, like cucumber goes into ocean, ocean bubbles, you have a swell, suddenly, you have a sea monster. What? Yes. And Twilight invites them all going, come with me if you want to swim. Excalibur. But anywho, yeah, like, what? 
This was out of left field. Suddenly a sea monster came out because sea cucumbers? What? It's not a sea monster. It's a sea puppy. It's so cute. It's so cute. I just want to snuggle. Okay, now I, I really need <laughs> okay, to... Okay, that's scary when you want to snuggle it, Silver. Maddie, hold me. Uh, sea dog accent. No, 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 no. What, what? I am now wondering, what is that uh, creature called? Bunyip. Oh, the horn-nosed bunyip? Yeah, was bunyip. It? The trihorn yeah. bunyip. Trihorn bunyip. The... It's 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 a it's it's a cuddle. I've got to call him Cuddles. Cuddles, yeah. Well, I thought in the show that he was called Bunyan. <laughs> but so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. First, first name Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Paul, Paul Bunyan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even Pinkie Pie uh, says that that's a stretch of logic. But yeah, it's true. The Bunyip's right behind them, and yeah, he was. Or it was the one responsible for their ship to sank. And, well, Rarity says, okay, that explains how the ship sank, but these two ponies here are jerks and I want an apology from them. Twilight pointed out that you guys wanted to give everyone a different experience that you failed to notice that everyone was doing the same thing as you were. And you guys should be apologizing to each other because you guys are derps. But... At the same time, there were there. We can't actually take more from these stories than just the cucumber sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Case in point, they all fought over the map. Applejack had an, a blindfold over one eye in two in two out of three stories. Mm-hmm. Odds are, I, I feel like they didn't really flesh out the corroborating stories to get the truth. In some ways, this feels like a cop out because. They're basically saying it's all this one character's fault, this one sea monster. It was just so adorable, I can't be mad. But (laughs) at the same time, too, right? Like, I feel that the way that they told this story near the end was kind of a cop-out in terms of, okay, the Bunjip is at fault for sinking the ship, but it was the ponies at deck that didn't play a good hand. Get it? Deck? Hand? Cards? No? (sighs) Dude. You're not going to beat my poker face. <laughs> uh, can't read my, can't read my, no, we can't read my poker face. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be a furry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right, Joey Wheeler. But anywho. <clears throat> uh, still, I, I do not like how they kind of wrap everything up too neatly. Like... Uh, the conflict was forced. That's all I have to say about that. But yeah, they apologized. They had fun. They found sunken treasure, used gauntlets as ice cream cups. And yeah, finally. That is unsanitary. I know, right? Sanitary. Okay, one, whatever bay they're in, if they're still in shallow water, that treasure chest should have been discovered a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Two, you do not put ice cream in gauntlets you just pulled from the sea. Yeah, you need to clean it first. You sell it off at an unreasonable price to a historical museum. <laughs> Call yourself a, an archaeologist when you're really just destroying history right there and then. Mm-hmm. And then you buy the ice cream store. <laughs> That's how it works. Nah, man. Like- also, it doesn't. it doesn't help that I saw my friend playing Tomb Raider yesterday where... Laura Croft is exploring ancient ruins and burning and breaking everything in her path. Oh, God, no. That, that woman's a psycho. I know. Uh, that Tomb Raider, yeah. L- Laura Croft is just insane. But game's good, though. But anyway, um, Spike gets his just dessert and have ice cream. Yay, <laughs> ice cream! Finally, the poor lad has something sweet to eat. Like, for the whole show, he's been trying to munch on something. Like beginning uh, the cookie he didn't get any cookies uh, when twilight left he had to steal some and when at pinkie pie's kitchen he wanted to lick the what you call this the icing didn't get the chance had to write like yeah for a spike though like yeah but hmm. he got his just dessert near the end for a hard day's work and yay everybody's happy everybody's playing around and whatnot so we're at the end and Maddie, what do you think about said episode? Like Silver said, the bunyip was just... It was just tons of dice. 
But he was also kind of like swimming up to the surface and basically saying, hello, I am your writer's convenience for this episode. It's all my fault. Blame me. But it's okay because I'm a nice sea monster. (laughs) I'm not going to eat you or destroy your ship like most sea monsters do. I'm going to hug you and play with you and stuff. (laughs) And hello, my name is DX DSX Machina. (laughs) Yes, basically. Uh, boys. (laughs) Yeah, but still, yeah. but still. I, I... Or um, Verity's line like later on when when they're they're making up and they're friends again, and Verity's like, "Let's never fight again." He's like, <laughs> "God's sake!" <laughs> Why? Yes, please fight again because it's highly entertaining because conflict is funny. <laughs> oh, true that, but come on, like uh, you have to give a reason for said conflict. Like I like the conflict mm. with Applejack and Rarity when. Rarity was going gaga over a guy. That that was funny. <laughs> it was like a one way brawl. The only line I remember. Sorry for talking over. Yeah, sorry, the only line I remember from that episode is just Rarity just going, "I love being covered in mud." <laughs> That's it. Oh god. I don't remember anything else? <laughs> I love being covered in mud. Uh, that's okay. not healthy. That, that's not clean. <laughs> Uh, but still, <laughs> so that's your view. Uh, for me, I like I mentioned before, this ending here was kind of a little left field. The bunyip was cute and adorable, but they didn't really point out or didn't really foreshadow his appearance. It's like, you, you know how certain shows kind of put the, uh, what you might call this, um, the gun thing, um, what was the word? What's the phrase I'm looking for? It has to do with a gun. The NRA? No, 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 no. It's um, foreshadowing something. It, it's used on theaters. Um, the, oh, oh, the Chekhov's gun. Yeah, Chekhov's gun. Like they didn't really put that there. It's like what suddenly? Like this is some lore that if you're really into it, that you might know said thing. But this is doesn't make sense because we weren't pointed out that okay. um this Banyip is attracted to cucumber sandwiches. And we got no idea about the bubbles. To us, that could have been totally random. The swell was because of the storm. So for us, general audience, this was not telegraphed pretty well. Oh, come on, Norman. Who doesn't know that Bunyips like cucumber sandwiches? God, don't be such a noob. Sha. Uh, but what do you think about said ending, Silver? Sha. Here's the thing about the Bunyip. This is so, I, I agree that this adorable bit of puppiness came out of left field. Mm-hmm. But how rare is it these days that My Little Pony introduces a creature in the wild that isn't trying to eat them? Oh, true that. The last creature I think they introduced was the Yeti, right? That tried to eat Pinky. Oh, no, true that. They tried to eat Pinky. The last fictional character I think that didn't mean our pony's physical harm was uh, Iron Will, and he wanted all the monies. Yeah, he... he Whatever you have to say about him, he was true to his word. He was a man of business. He was a loon. Yeah, true, but he was a man of business because he kept his promise. So, well, then he's not a... Have you seen Wall Street? There's no keeping your word on there. Well, this is Equestria. But anywho, um, let's go to final impressions. And, Silver, what do you think about said episode? Said episode is fun. It offers some very... It it gives Applejack of all ponies a chance to have sort of a memorable foil. Someone did a artwork recently, the many uh, faces of Applejack, and you see just how many uh, outfits and personas she's donned, from Apple Jewel to Mistress Marvelous to Pirate Applejack. Mm-hmm. She is a pony of many faces, many talents. So it's always fun for that. Pinky and Rarity are in fine form. There are two other reviewers who aren't with us, but I'd like to cite their work. Oh. First is DWK, who, in between his colorful language, (laughs) it's a polite polite way to put it, in between his colorful language, he pointed out maybe a better lesson that assigning blame in this really doesn't accomplish anything. I mean, friends have problems, friends mess up, and you forgive them. The people you love aren't awesome and flawless, but you forgive them because you love them. True, true. Maybe this episode was trying too hard for the super happy clean ending. Yes, you, usually that's how 
<sighs> MLP likes to do things. Like, they want to wrap things up neatly and tidy and kind of clean everything out. Which is kind of okay, but still, like what you mentioned about DWK's version or interpretation of the ending should have been, was pretty good. I do agree on that one. And then secondly is Patty B. Creations, who took a look at this and asked, wait, whose point of view are we really seeing? Mm-hmm. And she had the very insightful talk that even though it's the uh, it's the ponies recounting this, perhaps we're seeing Spike's imagination as she describes it and he takes notes. True that. That, wow. I never thought about it that way because, you know what? Yeah, that would have, that could have been a very interesting view. And so, therefore, we can attribute Pirate Jack and Darling, Darling, Darling and whatever is wrong with Pinky (laughs) uh, to Spike's view on them, which is perhaps a little more... Accurate? Oh, no, not accurate. Uh, Flanderized. Uh, Yeah, you know what? If Spike is writing and we're seeing what Spike is imagining, I could see that because Spike has... Well, Spike is young, so he just wants to dip around, play, and just be kiddie. So him doing all this, like him imagining uh, Rarity being the most awesomest thing in the world, yeah, I could mention that. And interpreting the story from Applejack's point of view with how Rarity is, with the whole darling, 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 even though she just said that line a few times. But still, uh, it's pretty interesting. I like these folks' take on this episode. But with, like we say, that that ending is just something of a, oh, let's go for the mega happy. (laughs) It's too clean. It's too clean. You know what? There's no way that I could say, oh, here's a better version of the story because I don't think this episode was clean. But anywho, um, my thoughts are aside. Uh, Are you done, Silver? All six. All right, Eden. And Seppi, what do you think? Pretty much the same opinion as always. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know about as always. We we can disagree. Yeah, true. Well, the only the only difference is I'm always right. <laughs> so Silver, you're you're not arguing. You're proving why you're right. <laughs> well, I'm going back to what Maddie said at the beginning of this podcast. I I, I highly disagree. You either have a perfect opinion or you're not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh boy. <sighs> Well, but yeah, I I actually kind of like the uh, head cannon that Silver was trying to uh, give, like with a uh, you know Spike um Spike's actual point of view. Well, I sort of doubt it because well he could be imagining the story, but it's still from their point of view and how they're describing it. Because why would he have like Rarity in like different dresses and you know the characters being different personalities? Still their point of view might just, just be through Spike's, like, just, how he's hearing it. Just be glad that Spike is so innocent, otherwise Rarity would be in a bikini the whole time. <laughs> yeah. But by, oh, yeah. by the way, uh, that was not Silver's hit cannon. That was, uh, who again, Silver? Patty B. Creations, a yeah. uh, channel I highly recommend people check out. True that, true that. You done, Seppi? Yeah, I'm done. All right, yeah. And... I'm done with life. No, Seppi, you have so much to live for, like... President Trump's reign. Oh, God. Okay, okay, bad Goodbye, example. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> you you get to watch the political commentary of President Trump's reign. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> and um, we over here in the UK get to point and laugh. <laughs> you, in the UK, you in the UK get to say, what happened to those young'uns? <laughs> Silver, if, if you're going to do this, then you're doing it with me. Come on. Oh we are going to commentate on Trump's That's not a word Together <laughs> Together 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 But anywho Maddie, what about you? What do you think about this episode? Yeah, it was just straightforward And kind of annoying in parts Really repetitious, of course Because of the the same story being told From three different perspectives And you were getting a bit Eh by the, by the third one, but there was still something, oh, like entertaining in each each thing, mainly from Rarity, really, because she's the um, an exaggerated version of Rarity is just hilarious, you know, because <laughs> she's yeah. already kind of yeah. out there and yeah. <laughs> um, it's not an episode I returned to 
Um, cause I had to rewatch the episode again for this podcast cause I was like, what's that episode again? <laughs> so that's how forgetful this episode is cause it, um, it just, it's, it's on its own is, is, uh, entertaining episode, but for me it doesn't really add anything to the show as a whole, really apart from the bun yip, but yeah. <laughs> oh, the bun yip's so bun yip. I want to see the bun yip again. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. <laughs> At least you can say uh, one good thing that came out of it was the bun yips. Yeah. And yeah. Rarity Darling 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 comments. <laughs> <laughs> darling! And, and Pirate Jack. Never forget the Pirate Jack. Yep. Pirate Jack. <laughs> but anywho, um, as for me, I, I think I shared my thoughts on this for a few, but um, for my final thoughts here is that episode was... Okay, it had its ups and downs, more downs than ups, really. But it had a few good scenes, like Pirate Jack was fun, um, Rarity with her snobbish ways. That could have been her for the entire episode or the entire series, a very snooty Rarity. But we didn't. But this episode showed us how she could have been, a snooty pony, which nobody really likes. And we got... Darling Jack, it's like um, Darling Rarity. Where Darling Jack? <laughs> uh, that... Maybe that should be the next form. Yeah, probably... No, it's it's more like Jack Sparrow. Oh, yeah. Apple Jack Sparrow. <laughs> oh god. But anywho, <clears throat> um, with Rarity, Darling, that's a new rendition. I would like to see, that I would like to see more in the future. And well, they give us the Banyip, but. He was kind of a Deus Ex Machina, where suddenly this is the answer to all your problems. Yay. <laughs> uh, but overall, I'd say go watch this episode because it's fun. But anywho, uh, Silver, what is next week's thing going to be? Oh, we're doing something special next week. We are going to ta- tackle the age-old issue of The Mary Sue. Oh. Oh, no. So have I don't your bro- know anything about that subject. <laughs> <clears throat> so have your brooms on standby, folks. We're going to be talking about this and seeing what can be done to squell this menace. What can be done to save me from her wicked broom ways? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Mary Sue is now employed by Rental Kill, which is a <laughs> pest control company in the UK. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Mostly deals with giant pigeons. <laughs> God save us all. <laughs> there, there is but one God in a Mary Sue story. The Mary Sue herself. Mm, or himself. <laughs> I think it's Gary Sue for guys. You're free to think that, my boy, but... <laughs> you're wrong. We all, know. we all know different. You may think that, but you're wrong. <laughs> so, but that's that's next time. True that. But anywho, uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill, and I'm a pirate. Yeehaw! I'm Sapphire Heart Song, and draw me like your French girls. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> and I am always mad. I'm just kidding. Aye. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun episode of NBS Reviews. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Stay artistic. No, what? <laughs> um, what was it again? Damn. Something about being creative. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> I think you can just end on down. <laughs> <laughs> there, That's my new outro. <laughs>